Hello, this is Mike, and welcome to PHP Programming Lesson 54 on Authentication Systems. And what we're going to do in this particular lesson is create a users class. And we're going to want to be able to add users, modify users, order users, delete users, read users, and build an authentication system which authenticates users. And one of the things we're going to start watching out for is actually SQL injection. You know, whenever you create an entry point, it's like a cut in your arm. And bacteria can get in, you've got to have a defense against that bacteria. And the same thing is with programs when you embed languages with inside of languages, you have the possibility of creating trouble. And we're going to find that SQL is injection trouble for us when we open up the skin of our program. So I want to make sure also that you review video 43, 44, and 45 because what we're doing here as far as the user's table is concerned is very similar to these tables. We did the same thing when we actually uh, created a CRUD system for the sequences table. Now we're just going to come along and do it for the user's table. So let's talk about the user's table that we created earlier. So go to PHP My Admin and go to Storyboard Example. And if you recall last time, we created a user's table. And in that user's table, we had an ID, a user's name, a hashed password, and a position. And position allows us to reorder the uh, usernames if we need to do that as well. So uh, that's what we need to do. Basically, we need to add delete, create, read, and also authenticate. And let's just start the whole process. Now you need to make sure that you review videos 43, 44, and 45. Because in those videos we actually built a similar class for the uh, sequences table. And now we're going to do the same thing for users. So I'm going to go through it fairly rapidly knowing that you've already seen this whole process before. So let's go to PHP Eclipse. So in PHP Eclipse, once again, I'm going to work with a database. So I need to required the config file as I did last time in the previous videos. I'm going to call my class user and I need a password which I'll make public and a query and a statement uh, basically that I'm going to use to uh, load my query into and a results array. And I'm going to come along here and do a constructor function and that constructor function or method I'm going to have all those database uh, defined names in there which is going to allow me basically to connect to my database. And once I'm connected to my database, I'm going to create a find all method. And all the find all method does is basically does a select star in my SQL statement and just does to the users table and orders by position ascending. And then you stick that into the uh, query, SQLI query, which you learned about in the previous video. Put in your connection and your query, and you'll do a while loop over that uh, statement using a fetch. And, and then you can echo out all the different uh, data information. So nothing that we haven't seen before in previous uh, statements. Now at the bottom I have my closed SQL connection. Let me just make a mention about this. In previous versions of PHP it was very important that you close the connection because it acted kind of funny but now in the newer versions of PHP you can actually leave this connection open and persistent. But for now we'll just go ahead and use a closed statement and talk about that in later videos. The next method I want to uh, basically create is uh, set user information. I'm going to create a user. And just like last time, I'm just going to use the insert to information, insert to the users table. And I'm going to use my four question marks because I have four positions, the ID, the uh, username, the password, and the position of that username password uh, record in the record set. And once again, just going to stick that into my uh, prepare statement. Throw an exception if there's an exception. And then I'm going to bind that array basically to my past stuff, zero my past stuff two and in the uh, third piece of the array is my password and I'm going to do an encryption on that SHA1 now once again this is not as secure as it once was so be careful you might want to switch to another uh, basically a uh, hash meshing scheme and then I'll have my last value which will be my position number. You've seen all this before basically what I'm doing is just putting an array in here that has the values I'm going to insert into my database. Let's go down and actually create and run this method so you can actually see it happen. So I'm going to go down to the bottom and once again I'm going to instantiate my class, my users class, I'll call it my users and I'm going to first run the method find all. You saw that? That should give us all the data back that's in the database. So it's going to run that. So we have two records in our database and here's the first one with the uh, name of the uh, username, the password, and the uh, position. And here's the second record in the database. Once again, the ID, the username, the password, and the uh, position. So that just prints everything out in the database. Now I'm going to actually add another value to the database. So let's go ahead and just comment this out. Let's add a third value to the database. So in this particular example, I'm actually going to designate the ID. We'll call it hungry dog. We'll let the uh, password be dlively. But remember, once again, that password is going to be hash, so I need to remember what that is. Write that down somewhere. And then we'll basically put it in the third position. 
So what we've done here, we've declared our array, and we just stick that array into the set user info. So right here, we're going to set that into set user info and run that query and insert that into our table. Let's go ahead and run it real quick. And once again, you've seen all this in previous videos, so I'm actually going through it kind of quickly. And it returned the number three, which means it's, that was the last index that had been modified. So let's go back and take a look and see, indeed, that we now have a third value in our data set. So I'm going to come back and uncomment that, and, and let's go ahead and just do our find all and print everything out. And when we do, we indeed now have a third value in our data set, and it's called hungry dog. Very nice. Let's continue with our user method. So once I've set information, then I actually want to actually be able to update and change that information. And once again, we just use the query string update users table. What ID, what username, what password, what position, and then where is the ID? That will take us to the position in the table that we're going to modify. So in this particular case, let's modify the third ID. So let's go down to the bottom. And instead of hungry dog, let's say my hungry dog. So I'm just going to modify the username. And uh, we're just going to basically uh, run the update method. And we'll call, comment this out. And let's run it. So it says you're connected, showing that it actually ran. Nothing came back, of course. We're actually going to go back and print that out. So what I'm, I'm going to go ahead and comment this out. So I'm actually not running that method anymore. And we're going to uncomment find all. And I'll see if the uh, hungry dog is changed to my hungry dog. I'm just going to run this method. And we can see that hungry dog is changed to my hungry dog for the username on the third record set. So no surprises here. We've seen all this before, but once again, just going very quickly through it because we're going to get to authenticate in a moment. So we can actually uh, update. Once you update, you want to delete in case you got something in there you don't want anymore in there. Once again, just going to use the delete from users and which ID, and that's going to delete it right from the uh, record set. Let's go and run that method real quick. So I'm going to come along here, and I'm going to comment this out and go to the delete line and basically put three in for the ID and I should uh, delete the third record set, the one that I added previously. So let's go and run that method. And nothing was returned. Let's go back and print everything out and see if indeed that record set has been removed. So we're going to run all now and let's see what happens. And when you run all, you see that the third record set no longer exists. So it works very nicely. So we've done pretty well here. We've got our full CRUD working here. We just have one more thing we need to do, and that's authenticate. And that basically what I want to do in authenticate is I'm going to pass in basically the username and the password. Any username or password I put in here. And I'm actually going to come along here and encrypt the password. So what I'm going to do is actually compare text username to text username, but text encrypted password to text encrypted password. So I'm not pulling out the password from the... Uh, database, unencrypting it and comparing text to text, but I'm actually encrypting what's input it and comparing hash to hash, and that's the way you want to do it. So basically my query string is I'm going to take select from the user's table, and where the user's name is equal to the username that I input it, and where the password, the encrypted password, is equal to the encrypted password that I input it. And I'm going to limit one just to look at the first uh, item in the record set. And then I'm basically going to do a query and a result. And I'm actually print the result out so you can actually see that. So let's come along here and see if indeed we get something that pairs up with our database. So in this particular case, what I want to do is I want to put in a user's name there. So what we're going to do now, we have tiny dog is our username and lively is our password. And we're going to actually going to run the method authenticate by sticking that array in there and then splitting that array up and going through the query string and seeing if that matches any record in our data set. And once again, we're matching hash to hash. That's going to run this code. And you can see we did, we were connected, and you've just created an authentication system, and that's pretty much all there was to today's lesson. A uh, really super system. We're actually going to be updating this and actually create an entire login system. But next, we need to take a look at SQL injection. So let's talk a little bit about what we did today. Pretty much it's a fairly simple lesson. We went ahead and just created a user's class. And just like we've done in video 43, 44, 45, we actually just uh, created all the different CRUD methods that we needed to create, read, uh, update, and delete. And we also created an authentication system. And that authentication system is going to be the backbone of what we're going to be doing in the future as far as uh, password systems are concerned. But once again, remember, once you kind of like open up your system for input, it's like you've got to cut your skin. And you've got to make sure that bacteria doesn't get in. And we're going to talk a little bit about SQL injection in the next video. Thanks for listening. This was Mike Lively. And I'll see you next time.